I'm John Avenson. I'm a retired Bell Labs engineer, and we're going to talk today about what you can do to retrofit your existing house and make it more energy efficient. We're going to work from free to very expensive things, free things you can do to your house. The first thing that you can do is knowledge. There's always an annual Green Homes Tour, the first Saturday of October since 1996. Uh, this year's tour due to COVID is going to be a virtual tour of videos only of about 15, 16 homes. Along with information and free things you can do is learn why is your house uncomfortable. Put up thermometers around the house and Try different rooms and different walls and windows and see where your cold spots are or extra warm spots are. And then we're going to be showing you what you can do about those things. Um, and even for more basic things, what's going to turn a thermometer warmer under the sun? A black rock or a white rock in the sun? Black absorbs energy, white reflects energy. When I'm teaching kindergartens, um, I'd start with this because black is going to show them the power, the great power of the sun. You can buy books and learn, what, uh, learn much from books and the internet. You can Google for solar homes, passive solar homes. Uh, our value of insulation um, this is how the earth rotates around the sun. <clears throat> In the winter time, the sun is over the southern hemisphere and it's barely off of our horizon, causing light to come in southern windows. In the summertime, the sun swings around and it actually comes up in the morning in the north. It swings a little bit south and it sets on the north, in the west, in, even in the afternoon. This is a map of the solar resource around the world. You can see that the western, southwest section of the United States is one of the prime areas of the world for taking advantage of solar energy. You can learn about air quality in your house. On Amazon you can buy CO2 meters and see uh, where your house is. This is a sensor. If I blew on this sensor, the number would jump up to 5,000. Uh, example, in a, a dormitory or a, a college uh, theater room, if you have 70 people or 100, this number might be climbing up to uh, 4,000. Stanford University did a study, and the human brain starts slowing down on its decision-making levels at 1,000. So you want to keep your CO2 levels in your house below 1,000. And uh, today, in today's world, the whole earth is, has risen above 400. Uh, 200 years ago, it was uh, down near 200. You can get meters for parts per million and uh, VOCs, volatile organic compounds. What are VOCs? Uh, anything that's evaporating into the air, very fine, uh, finer than aerosols. Uh, if you have cats in the house, their urine is going to send the VOCs into the thousands. When you cook with heat and oil, uh, the oil going in goes, sends this into five digits. Um, you can get graphs that will sh show you the uh, areas of the time of day for your VOCs or CO2. When I'm teaching children, I like to show them the immense power of the sun with this model of a passive solar heated house, such as the house that I live in. A passive solar heated house has all its windows on the south side to gather up the winter sun, and the windows are shaded in the summertime by two-foot overhangs so that no sun is coming in those windows from May 5th all the way to the end of August. Uh, this cardboard example shows that there's almost no windows on the east and west, but we have our main windows in the south. 
if I have a heat lamp on this window, the thermometer is going to go racing into the 90s. Uh, so an, another free thing you can do for fixing issues in your house, if you have forced air heat, registers that are purchased at the hardware store have all their vents 50% to the left, 50% to the right. But what if I have the coldest part of my bedroom over to the right? I can take these fins with my pliers and bend the fins all to the right. Now all the air is going to go off to the cold side of the room. Free fix. Another low budget fix is to take this cock, a caulking gun, turn off your breakers, pull out your uh, appliance plugs and switches, and caulk to the inside of your boxes. You're plugging the holes where the power wires come down through the rear. And you want to caulk around the edges. Uh, and now, after I did this to my house, after it took me two years, the home energy auditor man came back and said, wow, you've plugged up the equivalent of a whole sheet of paper hole in the wall just by all these little things adding up. We'll get to the home energy audit in a minute. Uh, another item that can save you energy is on your bathroom fans. Put on timers. Hotels have done this for decades. Uh, the timers will shut the fan off. You can go to bed and be knowing that the fan is going to come off. It also saves the uh, wear on the bushings in those fans. You don't have to replace their fan. Uh, at your hardware stores, you can buy these one pixel energy uh, um, temperature sensors. Doctors and nurses use these in your ear now to get your temperature. They use it for COVID coronavirus temperature checks. Uh, these are approximately uh, 20 to $30. And you can find the cold spots in your walls. That's the point, is looking for just $20 or $30 saying, oh, there's a cold spot. It must could be in missing insulation. Uh, windows are a basically a hole in your wall. In the winter time, if you have leaky windows, you can buy this film that you glue to the four sides, use a hair dryer, and it tightens it up, and it's good for one winter season. Uh, however, we can go one better with cheap fixes for windows. This is a sheet of plexiglass. The, go to, at, at Lowe's, they custom build, custom cut the sheet of plexiglass to a shape of the window that you measure, and then you buy a roll of magnetic one-sided sticky t uh, tape and <clears throat> you, you glue an iron bar to your window frame or your sheetrock. You paint it the color of the wall and once you have this up, your magnetic surface is going to go bang. It's going to clasp right on there with an airtight seal. It's amazing what this does. On a cold day, you'll have a, a room temperature on one side and you'll have 12 to 25 degrees difference on the backs on the outside side of your plexiglass. So another way to get education on improving your home is with home energy audits and your public service company will help to share the cost of these services. They run anywhere from 150 to $600 depending on the amount of time your agent you want your agent to stay in the house. He's going to come with a tent that goes on the front door and has a fan that sucks the air out of the house. This is a homemade version of that that you can make using a furnace squirrel cage. These are a dime a dozen from eBay as people take out their furnaces. You cut this hole for the exit of the air. You make a template that's the size of your window, such as in this picture. And you can turn on the power and it's going to blow the air out. It's going to be sucking in from here. And then you want to run around the house and find where all the leaks are coming in. You want to do this on a very cold day or a very hot day so you can feel the difference. And maybe a 20 degree delta between inside and outside. So this is a cheap way to find the low hanging fruit in your house. Um, with the energy auditor, he's going to rate your house and you can get a certificate that's similar to an East Energy Star on your refrigerator. 
uh, my house now has a HERS rating, home energy rating system of a three. Uh, that's a very tight house <clears throat> before you have solar panels. Another low budget item you can do is put a blanket around your hot water tank. No matter how good your hot water tank is, even if you just bought it this year, more insulation is always valuable. You can never have enough insulation. <clears throat> so these are called hot water tank uh, blankets. Uh, if you have a difference in your wall between an attic and a high ceiling living room, those are called knee walls. You can get blankets and go up into your attic and staple blankets to the back side of your knee walls. Many times they're not even insulated. An example of house insulation over the decades, this is an example of three different codes. The bottom area has no insulation in it. This was the case for before 1973 in Colorado. After 1973, all homes were required to have bats of fiberglass insulation. <clears throat> However, fiberglass insulation has been found not to be good enough. What you really want is dense packed cellulose. Cellulose is chopped up newspaper, it's fire retardant. And there's a service here in Lafayette that does dense pack to your house. They will drill little holes underneath your siding or through a junction of bricks and stuff a hose up there and jam this fiberglass against the wall. The cellulose will fill all the corners. As they feel the back pressure, they take the hose out a few inches, few inches, few inches. Finally, they have this whole wall compressed. Now this wall is airtight in addition to having a good R value. The air tightness has been found by Enroll to be just as important as the R value of insulation. So on a, on a windy day, which this machine was simulating, uh, somewhere between 20 and 25 miles an hour, on a windy day, you will not have air exchanges in the house that the furnace has to keep heating over and over, such as a normal house is 10 to 20 times that a furnace has to reheat the volume of air. This is a great display that shows if I run this uh, hair dryer through the empty corridor, you can see that the hot air is escaping through the fiberglass because fiberglass is just like a filter. It doesn't stop. And no air is getting through the dense pack area. This is a picture of the hot air coming through the bottom corridor going up through the fiberglass, but it can't get through the dense pack cellulose. We're going to move on to LED lighting next. So <clears throat> LED lighting has come a long ways. In the 1960s, LED lighting was uh, invented by accident. The factory was making diodes and transistors. They got some dust in the air, and when they applied electricity to it, it glowed. And they go, oh my gosh, it's a mistake. But then they realized, hey, that's a great way to make light. All the way since the 60s, they've only been able to make red and green colors. Not until the early 2000s did they figure out how to have blue. Blue makes the three primary colors of a color television. With blue, I can now make a white. And so <clears throat> in 2003, I'm an early adapter, I had to have a white floodlight. I paid $185 for this light in 2003. It shows all the LEDs. LEDs run on only two volts of electricity, battery voltage. So basically you have to go from the 120 volts through a power supply in the rear that's changing that 120 down to two volts and powering up the LEDs. That's the value of having this old light bulb. You can see what's going on. However, this power supply is a waste of energy in itself. Uh, so LEDs have evolved. You can see that this one has heat fins because of the power supply. This is a 110 watt equivalent for an outside flood. Uh, this is 110 watt, it was a little better. Uh, this is your bathroom light and you can have different colors. So 
the noon sky is uh, 5,000 K. Uh, a cool light is 3,000 K, and a candle light is 2,700. The human retina has evolved to read and see under the sunlight, which is 5,000 K. So if I'm using a 2700 bulb and I want to read fine print, the fine print is going to be difficult for me to read. But if I move it in front of a 5000 uh, K, it's like putting on glasses. Suddenly I can really see fine print easy. Um, in addition to the change in colors, it has evolved the power. So just a few years ago, the engineers decided, hey, if each one of these pulls two volts, what if I stuck these in series and I added up from zero volts to 120 just with the LEDs, I no longer need a power supply and waste that power. So the latest bulbs, this is still 110 watt equivalent. Remember, the old one had heat fins and it's pretty warm. This one has no power supply. It's light as a feather. This one pulled 20 watts. This is the same light for 13 watts. So it's really the best time that we're living in to have um, LEDs and replacing your old bulbs. This is definitely 10 times less electricity than the old incandescent bulbs. And it's uh, about half the electricity of a compact fluorescent bulb. Speaking of fluorescence, uh, there are replacements to your four foot uh, fluorescent tubes. These come in all colors. Uh, they can either be going into an existing outfit that still has the uh, transformer in the back. That transformer pulls six watts whether you're using it or not. So, but you can buy the versions that use that or you can clip out that and just wire 120 volts from one end to the other. Uh, LEDs are plastic. You can hit them and they don't break. Moving on. Uh, so a little bit about water savings. You can, <clears throat> when you get up in the morning, you usually have a, a low flush toilet nowadays, but what about the cold water you f pull to get from the hot water source up to your bathtub to take a shower? You might be waiting two minutes for cold water going down the drain. Uh, this is a great hot water pump called Demand, D-M-A-N-D, and it is uh, uh, activated by either a motion sensor as you walk in the bathroom or a door doorbell button. I have a doorbell button right next to the toilet. I can say I'm going to want the water there for the shower in just a minute. I, it comes with remotes. I can push the button at my bed, and by the time I walk to the bathroom, the hot water has arrived. So how does this work? Uh, your faucet is right here. These are T's. You have your copper behind the wall, and this pump is going to be activated. It's going to start pulling the hot water from your source through maybe 60 feet of copper pipe. Finally, the hot water arrives. It hits this little thermometer and says, oh, I feel hot water. Shut off the pump. Now when I turn on my faucet, the hot water is right there, and I haven't had two minutes of cold water going down the drain. And this is underneath the sink. The bathtub is just nearby, so it's also going to get uh, immediate hot water. This is part of the top-of-the-line code for uh, the Department of Energy. Also for talking about hot water, the latest efficient way to have hot water is with a hybrid hot water tank. Hybrid means it's going to use the heat inside the space of your house to heat the water rather than gas or electricity. If you have a lot of gas, a backup of electricity will also heat the water. But for the most part, it's taking the heat out of your air. If you have solar heat coming in the house, uh, that means you're heating the water by solar heat also. Uh, the exit of this hot water tank, because it's putting heat into the water, is going to put out cold air. It comes out at about 47 degrees. You can shoot that with a flex duct into the furnace air system and you can run it through the house to dissipate slowly the cold temperature throughout the rest of the house. This is the living room carpet. This is the infrared picture of the same. 
Uh, these hybrids come with sophisticated controls. You can change the temperature easily. It tells you what temperature the water is. It has an app on the phone, and on the phone I can easily change the temperatures of the uh, desired temperature of the tank. Uh, and in also the learning mode, you can Google for our insulation values. And on Wikipedia is a chart that shows all the different building materials from concrete up to a vacuum. We all know about the thermos vacuum has good retention of hot uh, fluids. So on this chart, snow is R1 per inch. Concrete is not an insulator, it's a conductor, but it's thermal mass. And concrete's way down here at 0 0.08 R per inch. Uh, you have your uh, pink insulation and you have uh, rock wool. These are R3.5 to R3.8 on the chart. Then you get up to uh, fiber uh, uh, foams, and foams are way up at near the top of the chart, from R5 per inch to R7 per inch, and above that, the best you can get is a, a vacuum. So for R value per value per inch, the best you can do is with <clears throat> uh, polyiso foam. There are many different foams; they all have different R values. This stuff is featherweight. You want to have a surface on the outside of your house for the uh, siding to be attached to. It can either be mortar or lap siding. Uh, the thicker you go, the more R value you're going to have. So why do I want better insulation? If I'm only doing <clears throat> uh, the standard 2 by 4 construction, Somewhere between the inside of the house and the outside of the house is your frost point on a freezing day or a dew point. After, when it's below 32 degrees, you're changing from dew point to frost point. Think of a bottle of Coca-Cola. It's gathering, a, a very cold, it's gathering droplets of water on the outside of the bottle. That's happening in your wall also. Uh, if you can wrap the house with foam, you're going to put that damaging frost point into the foam and not somewhere in the middle of your wall. So foam is indestructible. Once you've wrapped the outside of your house with foam, your house is now not going to have mold in the walls after 10, 20 years. Uh, the house will last 500 years, at, uh, if not more. Uh, another way to tighten up the house is with Aero barrier. Aero barrier is a new process just in the last couple years. They use a fan to compress air into the house. They put these emitters on tripods in different rooms, and the emitter are, are sending out an Elmer's glue substance, non toxic. And as the compressed air from the front door is pressing into all the cracks of the house, this glue will start at the molecular level, filling up all the holes from the construction. Uh, windows, anywhere that has small holes up to a half an inch. And within three and a half hours, you've gone from 10 to 20 air exchanges down to 0 0.5 or 0 0.2 air exchanges. Uh, it's very reasonable cost, two, three thousand dollars. You're done instantly. If you wanted to do this in an existing house, you would have to hire a painter contractor to come and lay plastic on all the carpets and countertops and furniture before you hire this service. To come. Another low-priced thing you can do for thermal control is putting film on your existing windows. At the hardware store, you can buy gold film and you can buy silver film. I'll pull it out of the box so you can see what it looks like. It looks like a mirror. You put these on with uh, a spray bottle of water and a squeegee to get the air bubbles out. This is going to reflect the sun immediately back out rather than depending on a window shade that you might be pulling. I recommend the gold color over the silver color because 
even on a sunny, cheery day, the silver color looks like a cloudy day, whereas the gold makes even a cloudy day seem like a Sunday. <laughs> uh, and how does film work? So in the 80s, we started with low E windows. They were invented. Sun comes in, it hits the surface. In the industry of glass, they always count surface numbers from one to whatever, from outside to in. So the first pane of glass is surface one. The inside of that is surface two. This is where your uh, air is. And then you have surface three for your second and surface four. And you can put these layers of mylar on the inside surfaces at the factory to create different behaviors of sun coming in your house or sun staying out of your house. You can have high solar heat gain or low solar heat gains based on the engineering of different uh, qualities of the reflective mylar. Room heat has a tendency to hit the inner side and reflect back in. Sun has a tendency to reflect its heat back at each level of the window. Uh, <clears throat> so there are nowadays many engineered solutions for windows. Since my house was built in the 1980s from an NREL National Renewable Energy Labs design, that research went to Canada and then to Europe and Germany, and Germany came up a, with a building code called Passive House. And Passive House came back full circle back to the United States in 2006 7. Because of the research from Germany, Europe has 40 factories that can make Passive House certified windows. Canada has four, United States only has one. Happens to be right in our backyard of, of here in Lafayette, Colorado called Alpen Windows. And their top of the line has four panes here uh, of glass. You have, or it can be two panes of glass and two panes of mylar. There's gas inside between these panes. How does gas work? You have three choices, you have air, argon and krypton. Air is very light. It wants to compress and expand easily. So if I have a cold winter day here and warm temperature inside the house, the air is going to compress, get heavy, fall. It's going to expand from the warm surface and you're going to get all these eddies that are starting to conduct the outside temp to the inside temp, making almost no value for thermal resistance called R value. Then you, the next level up is argon. Argon is heavier, it slows these eddies down and you start getting some good thermal R values. The top of the line is krypton gas. Uh, krypton is very heavy and doesn't want to move. Now you've really got uh, high R values. These windows from Alpen are R13 center of glass. Center of glass means two inches out from the frame. Uh, and they have an R17 and they have a five pane window uh, that's R21.8, just amazing. Uh, Walmart was their first customer for that. Also, you want a tight house, so we've spent a lot of time tightening up the house. Uh, Passive House certified windows have three rubber seals, one, two, and three, just like a modern car door has many rubber seals. So there's great opportunities to seal up the windows when you crank out the window. <clears throat> uh, the argon glass, by the way, when they ship these, it's uh, filled in the window and there's a, a straw metal tube <clears throat> that goes to these mylar birthday balloons. And as they ship their windows over the mountains and back down to the Pacific uh, sea level, the balloons will expand at the top of the mountains and get compressed and push that gas back into the window at uh, low elevations. At the destination, you clip off the straw and seal it. And now the double rubber insulation out on the outside is not going to let that uh, uh, leak out.
So we have to put this window onto the house. There are nailing fins here. I can, I can isolate the window from the thermal bridging of the house using these foam window bucks. This nailing fin goes on the side of your house like that. And remember that I said this was R13 in the middle of glass. This wall is only by minimum code R9. Uh, with the poor, ins the poor insulation, we have R9. With dense pack, we're talking R13 to R15 because of the completeness of filling all the gaps. And remember that this glass is, is better than your house wall, your 2x4 house wall. Isn't that amazing technology? Hot air panels are a great way to add additional heat to your house. It could be up in the mountains, dead of winter. Uh, the sun is always great power. These work by the sun going through the glass layer, the uh, black metal panels behind. There's a hole on one end that's sucking the room temperature air into the panel. And there's a hole on the other end where the, across the seven feet, that air is entering back into the room at 160 degrees. This has been the case on my panel since 2006. Uh, they come with a thermostat so that you can turn the fans on these on and off. This is the panels being installed. You can see on the back side there's the intake hole and output hole. Uh, leaned. There's going to be a, ho a hole drilled in the wall for the input and output. These can go vertical or horizontal. Here's the panels installed, and here they are uh, in summertime where I covered them, but they're only air. There's nothing that can be damaged, such as water. Uh, these are uh, approximately 120,000 uh, BTUs per hour of heat. And finally, I took a picture of the temperature thermometer gun showing 192 degrees coming out of this hot air panel. There you can see the fan just a little bit. But how did I get 192 degrees? I um, put a reflective mylar across the sidewalk on the sun side of this panel, so it was getting double sun. And you don't want to really do that because at 192 degrees, it's pretty scorching and it melts the lubrication right out of the fan bearings. So let's move on. So in the construction of a house, we have cavities with a structure of two by fours or two by sixes. Uh, this is a R9 equivalent wall. This with dense pack is maybe R13 to R19. And when we attach windows, windows are a hole in the wall no matter how good a window is on a zero degree day. Uh, so you have uh, R19 house here with passive house, you might have up to R60 walls and R100 roof. In relative terms then, even a quadruple pane window is still R13, it's still a hole in the wall. But the other factor is also to make it airtight. And all cross members of the house should be sealed with tape. Where I screw these nailing fins into the house, each hole has to be, uh, could be a possible air leak. We're going to seal up all the possible holes with this Passive House approved tape imported from Switzerland. This is made by SIGA and it comes in different widths and colors. Uh, we want to wrap this tape around all four edges of the windows. And when you have a wrap like Tyvek, there, Tyvek actually is illegal by Passive House terms, uh, uh, you have to use no staples on anything in a passive house quality house. Everything is done by tapes on all four sides. Your, the house goal is to make it as tight as a car tire. Uh, so here we're preparing 
took the old window out. Uh, you can do these things yourself. You can order windows from Alpen and tape up all the defects take after you took your old window out uh, and install the new windows. This is a collection of warehousing all my windows before I got started. So Alpen also has another incredible design. It's called Sun Redirect Film. Across these windows up here, the sun comes in intensely on December 21st. That's the winter solstice when the sun's the lowest. Uh, and so sun coming into a room is awfully bothersome on your shoulders, on your computer, your keyboard. Alpen has something called sun to redirect film. Here's those four windows you saw in this picture. Uh, notice that these two windows, the sun is low, hitting the bricks. The far two windows, the sun is up at the ceiling. That, these are laser etched horizontal lines on a film that are reflecting the sun up to the ceiling like louvers. <clears throat> and if the ceiling is uh, glossy white it's in an office, it's going to put that sunlight deeper into the room. You don't need uh, interior lights turned on. A very sustainable idea. So I'm getting all the sunlight, but it's not uh, uh, being reflected out by our solar reflector stuff. It's called sun redirect film. Also, when you add a window to the house, you want to use expanding foam around the perimeter to further seal up and create some R value of any gaps. This is great stuff. Another sustainable item as we increase in costs are metal roofs versus asphalt shingle roofs. Uh, metal roofs should last 100 years versus asphalt shingles are torn off every 10 to 30 years, especially if you have hail. And the recycling of asphalt shingles, uh, they make an effort maybe to put some of that into, back into the streets. But from my uh, witness, I've seen most of it get into a trash trailer and go to the dump. So uh, metal, metal, these come in different uh, gauges. 22 gauge, 20 is, 24 gauge is thinner, 26 gauge is going to get dented by hail easily. Uh, you can also have rubber roofs. R rubber is used in industry. Uh, this rubber also goes on the tops of your RVs, recreational vehicles. Uh, I thought, wait, if I can put rubber on balconies and on roofs, why not cover my deck on my house with a rubber floor. So I recently took off all the planks of my deck that were getting rotten after 20 years. Decks are considered disposable items by most construction companies where you have to replace them. That's not sustainable. So I took up all the boards before the framework started getting rotten. I put down subflooring that you would have in your kitchen uh, and covered it all with glue and this stretching rubber so now my deck is uh, waterproof. I can sit under the deck and on a rainy day, it's not coming down on the lawn chairs. Uh, so this is a great solution. Also, it's the rub this is super flex from the RV industry. So if I was in an airplane, I'm looking down on all the industrial buildings of all the cities over the world, you're always seeing white roofs. White roofs are this rubber, they're very, cheap and quick to put in uh, and they're going to last for many decades and notice the color this one is tan but from your airplane point of view all those windows are roofs are white if I use my infrared camera and I look down on the white roofs there's a 40 to 60 degree difference between a white roof and a tan or a gray roof because the white roofs are reflecting the sun back up off the building. So you have a great thermal value there also, having a white roof. Uh, if I have dark shingles on my house, I am sucking in the sun's heat during the summertime, making it much more hard for central air to keep your house cool inside. Finally, we want to talk about the value of windows on different sides of the house. 
there's high solar heat gain windows and low solar heat gain windows. They're customized. If I want a passive house collecting the winter sun, because it's coldest in the winter, I want high solar heat gain windows on the south side and low solar heat gains, which usually have a higher R value, insulation value, on the west, north, and east. This is a sun's solar transmission meter. It's watts per square meter. And if I point this sensor at the sun on a warm, on a, a bright Colorado blue sky day, doesn't matter if it's winter or summer, this number is going to show uh, 300 and to 320. On a low solar heat gain, if I go from the uh, direct sun to the sun coming in and coming through the window, this is going to be knocked down to maybe 60 watts per square meter. And on a low solar heat gain, Alpen has uh, made a 2 BTUs per square meter. That is amazing. I can put that on my west windows or east windows. I can have a mountain view and have not be bothered by the heat of the sun, even though it might be 100 degrees outside. I do still recommend, however, having movable shades. <clears throat> uh, shades that can go up and down and shade me per the hours of the day or uh, uh, season. So I do recommend uh, active shades for the house. Uh, as you can see on my house, the sun is shining. It has triggered by an automatic environmental control computer in the house. Uh, there's thermometers on every window. The computer knows the temperature of the glass inside. It's got a weather station outside, and the computer is measuring the difference, and it knows when to lower and raise the outside uh, shades. <clears throat> I can activate this, and you can see the east shade is going up. I'm just manually overriding the computer in the house. The computer will probably lower that on its own. Uh, these are from, yep, the computer reversed it on its own. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and uh, so those are about $800 per 12 feet. They're pretty reasonable for a motorized shade. Each end of the shade is on a cable with a ring so they don't blow in the wind, uh, but they do come with uh, wind anemometers and they will automatically be pulled up at 20 miles an hour. That's a great way to keep solar from getting into your glass. Once solar has gotten past the glass into your house, you have the greenhouse effect. That's really hard to get that heat out. Even if you have curtains inside, the heat is pretty much trapped in the house. There are several excellent reasons you want motorized shades versus manual shades. Humans are forgetful. They forget that the sun is coming in. They don't realize that the house is heating up yet from the sun uh, before they notice it is uh, too warm and the air conditioning load is getting needlessly used to keep the house cool. Uh, humans might be still sleeping, but these shades can be operating automatically. Uh, so it's a very good idea to have computer operated uh, shades motorized. Also, you can have inside shades. In 1981, my government project house was pre-wired on all the windows for electric shades due to this very reason. Uh, the inside shades go down and up with the sun and the clouds. The cloud comes, the shade goes down. Don't let that heat out of the house. It's another reflective uh, layer. When the sun comes back out, raise the shade, let that heat in the house, start heating up, get all that power from the sun we can. And that power in this particular house of the sun is collected into thermal mass. In the center of my house is a air duct at the ceiling with a thermostat. It says, oh, I feel superheated air from all that glass. And it starts a fan that sucks that hot air off the top of the house down a 14 inch diameter chute to the bottom. And the thermal mass is all being heated up during the day. There's a 10 foot tall, five foot by five foot cinder block box in my house filled with two inch rounded river rock. 
and the cold air, the hot air is brought from the ceiling down to the basement floor and up through these rocks all day. And then at nighttime, we live off the heat of the rocks. Uh, there are bricks on the inside of the house versus outside. The uh, bricks also are very decorative, but they have thermal mass, and they are reducing the temperature swings from the extremes. They're letting off the heat that they gathered off all day long. Uh, so if you're super insulating a house and you have a brick adobe that's built in 1920s, I hate to say it, but the best thing to do is to put foam on the outside of that brick, let that brick become part of your thermal mass, and then recover the outside of the house with uh, mortar or siding. It can be very attractive, but you've made, you've modernized a, a hundred year old house that can be super efficient. So in summary, we have the top of the line windows and uh, we have insulation, we have better roofs. On glass, we can have films that we can put on ourselves. We can wrap our house in foam or we can contract an aero barrier company. Uh, we can save water with uh, these pumps, which are required by the top department of uh, building codes nowadays. Uh, we have LED lighting, the history of how far they've come. They've reduced e wattage even in the last few years. We have better insulation, and before 1973 was no insulation in Colorado. We can have an energy audit, and they will tell us the low-hanging fruit of what's the first thing you should do to make your house uh, more energy efficient. Uh, you can make your own storm windows. This is a magnetic strip, remember. You can caulk your, your own air leaks. You can buy tools that tells you what the temperature is on a cold day. You can find bad spots behind the walls because they're cold. You can build, you can bend the fins of your forced air furnace ducts. You can put thermometers up all over the house and just start learning how alive the beast of your house is. Different rooms, different walls, windows. On the sides of windows, I've seen where you take the trim off and I can actually see daylight between the two by four wall and the, the window. Uh, very poor construction and many new home window replacement companies will try to hide that. They won't be taping and sealing their windows. Um, and uh, finally, read books. There's lots of information online. And we also have the annual American Solar Energy Society Green Homes Tour. Uh, and in Denver, we do it on the first weekend of every October since 1996. And thank you.